Um, so we're always going to identify our patient um, by agency protocol. Um, we are also going to follow state and federal regulations. Um, we are going to um, abide by standard procedures or standard precautions, um, make sure that we're wearing gloves, hand hygiene. Uh, we are going to ensure patient safety and privacy as well as promote good body mechanics. Okay, um, uh, this is uh, going over the um, application of the um, sterile um, wet to damp, wet to damp dressing. Um, first thing we're going to do is we are going to open our sterile field. Um, so in doing so, we are going to um, follow these steps um, in opening it. So. First thing we're going to do is it would be um, away from me, um, away from the patient, um, towards the patient, towards me. And we are making sure that we are not touching the inside of our sterile field. Um, some of the rules that apply for our sterile field, we um, do not turn our back on our sterile field. We do not uh, reach across. Um, it's uh, over. It's um, and we are not, it's sterile, always touches sterile. Um, the next thing we're going to do is, um, uncap our solution, um, because we will be using that here pretty shortly. Um, and then, um, our next step would be, uh, donning, um, just one sterile glove and that's going to be on our dominant hand. Um, so in donning gloves, um, we are going to make sure that if this is due to space, um, it's really hard for me to demonstrate appropriately without touching my other sterile field. But I should point out also that if we are opening our gloves um, in the previously open sterile field that we have, we want to make sure that we are not um, crossing them over or touching them. So. Um, we will make sure that we're doing it away from our actual sterile field. Um, so in opening gloves, uh, we're going to make sure that the cuffs are pointing down towards us. Um, we are also going to make sure that we're not touching the inside of the packaging. Um, we're, we're opening them up by the flaps. Again, making sure that we're not contaminating the inside. We're going to open and straighten out without touching the inside. Um, right now, we're just going to um, be applying our um, dominant hand glove. So in doing so, we're going to go ahead and pinch the inside of the cup, um, which that part is not sterile. Um, we're going to make sure that we're stepping away from our sterile field um, and, and putting our glove on. We are making sure that we are not touching the outside, the outside of our glove, and we are keeping our hands above our waist and in front of us. Part is um, emptying out our um, supplies from our sterile field. Um, so of course we'll be using our um, sterile hand or dominant hand with that is glove. Um, uh, we are also taking in consideration. Uh, one fourth of the sterile field on the borders is also considered it's considered non-sterile. Um, so when we are emptying out our supplies, we need to take that in consideration. We also need to take in consideration the fact that we are do not reach over our sterile field. Um, we actually go out and around. Um, so um, I'm just going to um, take my materials out and drop it on my um, sterile field making sure that I'm not reaching across and over my sterile field and I'm emptying out all of my materials I'll be using. Um, next would be um, the pouring of the solution. So I'm going to take my ungloved hand um, and I'm going to reach around and not crossing my sterile field. Um, I am going to come across here and I'm going to put um, the, oh, I'm going also to ensure that the label 
is in um, it's in my palm side. Um, and then I am going to pour the solution. I'm going to make sure that I'm about four to um, six inches away. Um, that's ensuring for no, no splashing and also um, to ensure that the tip of the bottle is not touching our sterile field. We are now ready to apply the um, other glove. So um, sterile touches sterile. Uh, we are going to um, place our um, our gloved hand on the inside of the cuff and we are going to be stepping away from our sterile field and inserting our non-dominant hand oh, above the waist. Bad habit. Bad habit. I'm going to be using the forceps and um, our forceps and our uh, q-tips. Um, we are going to be using the forceps with our non-dominant hand and we're going to be using the q-tips with our dominant hand. Um, we are going to squeeze any excess um, solution off of our gauze pads um, and then in applying the gauze pads to the wound, um, we are going to um, uh, make sure we are doing it um, a layer at a time. Um, we are going to also place the gauze in the wound and we are going to ensure that we are um, also placing the gauze in any crevices um, of the wound. Um, after we have finished with our first layer, um, we are going to also be applying um, a second layer. Um, we also want to make sure that we are not packing um, the gauzes too tight into the wound. So once we have all of that done, our second layer is on there, we're ensuring that it's not packed in there too tightly. Um, we then are going to um, use the 4x4 gauze pad um, and we are going to place it over the wound. Um, we will then secure it with our Montgomery straps. Um, we are going to make sure that we are labeling it. So with the date, the time, um, my initials, um, and then we are going to dispose of any material um, properly. Um, and then we are going to then assist the patient to a comfortable position.